so we got it in today we're going to show you how we put this ls3 together using texas speed uh rods pistons uh texas speed ported heads uh we're not fucking master mechanics we are not a certified master mechanics but we are can do it motherfuckers hell yeah so don't be too harsh on us in the comments if you have any pointers or tips or you would have done something different you know just let us know in the comments but we're just uh doing this because we like to wrench on shit we like to have fun i like to go geek geek all right so yeah i hope you like the video use the piston to level this the rings so when we start filing them down and doing our ring gaps i uh, will be able to get an accurate reading As far as the gap, we're just following. Um, Texas Speed had like this little spec sheet. What they recommended the gap to be at. We're just following that sheet. It's kind of like a, in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. It had like a, a street strip or like at the high end was like straight race only. We're yeah. Kind of in the middle almost. There was a moderate, moderate street turbo nitrous and then there was a late model stock. And I'm pretty sure we went with it. It'd be cool to show that, you know? Yeah. You still got that sheet? Yeah. Yeah, so this is straight from Texas Speed. You multiply the bore times the numbers they're giving you here, and you get the, the recommended ring gap. So that's where we're following. Uh, I'm going to be one sign. Okay. He mounted, he mounted up the rods in a way that the valve reliefs will be on the same side of the block, left and right. And I was telling him how typically the valve reliefs go on the intake side because usually the intake side has bigger valves and bigger lift in the cams. So we're just going to make sure to face them the right way. We got them all mounted up. Obviously, we gapped all the rings. So now we're going to go ahead and start assembling the pistons and go from there. All right, so here on the um, spec sheet here, it's saying on the first ring, you angle these notches up. Even on the second ring, um, it gives an explanation as to why that's beneficial. It's just, it runs better, more efficient. Uh, so we noticed there's uh, it's a little N, just to make sure that little N on the ring has got to be faced up on all of them. And same thing on the second ring. They're not perfectly squared up. On the inside lip, it's angled and that actually faces up. So we're just following the spec sheet here. So we already got the crankshaft in and torqued down, plastic gauged uh, within spec. So now it's time to actually install the pistons and rods. As far as the rings, we just um, did the oil rings 180 of each other at the skirts. The oil and the compression ring 180 of each other at the pins. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and throw it together.
go too far. <laughs> She's a beaut. Look at that. Sometimes you just gotta say, what the look at that. Dude, that's the way to go, man. Uh, new tires are overrated. Dude, I bought all terrains for three, like for like 300 bucks. Bro. Would it be cool if all the pisses just fell on the floor? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so obviously all the pistons are set into place. Gotta just kind of align them. We got all the journals nice and lubed up with assembly lube. So from here, all you gotta do is really push the pistons up, get the rods lined up, and torque down the rod bolts. What's the torque uh, foot pound? I think it's 70. 70, uh -huh. 70 foot pounds. Fuck it. Oh, here it is. Seventy-five foot pounds with lube. Damn, do we have enough assembly lube? <laughs> That's like, uh, I'll get some more. <laughs> no, nah, my mains are kind of sick. It's fucking everywhere. <laughs> Damn, that was pretty tight. Twenty-five. So got the whole bottom end torqued down. Um, kind of just set the oil, oil pump in place. Got the windage tray, pickup tube. Um, so yeah, now we just, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and slide in the cam. I think we're gonna time it up, uh, get the dot facing 12 o'clock, and then, well, I guess we could do that later. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Got it nice and lubed. I know people like to see lubed up cams. Good night, mate. In some of my videos, I just put like, 1540 like oil, but it doesn't show up good and they think it's dry and they talk shit <laughs> <laughs> Like it's not dry motherfucker I don't know how you did that usually I got to stick some bolts in there to like, you know, use yeah. some leverage and That is Mike. All right Just installing the cam plate. Once the cam's in there and there's sprockets, you'll look like like we're fucking getting somewhere, you know? Hell yeah. We're gonna get our yee yee on. Alright, so as far as the oil pump goes, um, some people recommend you align it, take the plate off and you align the gears, but like nine out of ten people just say bolt it on and send it. But uh, at the minimum, uh, what's a good idea is to Rotate the crank as you tighten the oil pump just to make sure like self aligns and there's no binding or any uh, rough spots That's all we did. We rotated and, and tightened at the same time. Everything felt fine So just got to get the front plate Tommy cover on gonna get the rear main cover on and get the pan on Start working on the top end after that I got the front timing cover, the rear main cover, got some silicone on the corners. Gonna lay down the oil pan gasket and what's after this? Top end? Uh, yeah, after we do the oil pan, we're gonna flip it over and uh, basically determine whether we want to assemble the head outside the vehicle or go ahead and just throw the clutch on, stick it in the car, and then assemble the rest from the top end. Yeah. So whatever works. Uh, so right now we're just priming the uh, the pump because there's a lot a lot we got to fill up with oil it's the whole pickup tube the block and then you got to fill up the whole crankshaft with oil it's just a big void like um, I don't know just be a dry start just trying to avoid a dry start for healthier applications <laughs> and at a certain point you can like see the oil coming out of the, the journals yeah but I mean we could just call it get at a certain point I got Probably a little bit more than I 
half the port in there already. Yeah, I'm sure that's good. Yeah. Sucking it in there. Oh yeah. There it is. Look. Okay. Oh yes, yeah, it's starting to come out. All right, cool. Motor is prime. So the whole system is full of oil, and the pump actually stops it from like backflowing. So it'll it'll hopefully maintain that that oil in there. So next thing we gotta do is just put all the lifters and the trays in. Maybe put the valley cover on there. Mm -hmm. You got a new gasket for that too? Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, making making good progress. <laughs> God damn. Alright, well, I'll be your first comment, dude. Let's put some coochie in there. Coochie? Mm -hmm. Some coochie cream? Coochie, coochie, ba, wow, 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 This guy was made for the camera. <laughs> 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 Tight. Yeah. Like that, Alright. It shouldn't require this or a lot of tension when you're re rotating it, especially if you don't have the heads. So if you have any more tension than what you see here, probably the SM fucked up. Yep. Alright, so we decided to bolt the heads up while it's on the engine stand and we're gonna support the bottom of the motor. Cause you said it sags a little bit, huh, with all the weight? Yeah, these bolts were only for the compressor, and I don't want to put too much tension on them and ruin them, so. Yeah. A little extra support system never hurt nobody. Yeah. Now, we are going to brake clean the hell out of the engine. Get any extra particles or foreign... Contaminants? Yeah, <laughs> Is that all? Foreign contaminated. <laughs> Sound like we know what the fuck we're talking yeah. about. So did you send your stock heads out to Texas Speed? Mm -hmm. Okay, and they did they did machine where they ported and yeah. So uh, I sent the stock heads to uh, Texas Speed and Performance. They ported, polished them, and then they all installed all new titanium retainer shims and valve springs. Okay. Sad. So how much did that run? Uh, I want to say it was close to twelve hundred. They look fucking beautiful. beautiful. I like their stamp right here, look. They're proud of that shit, huh? Hell yeah. Ooh. Look at that. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta say, what do we got that? <laughs> Drop down and take up. Damn. I have an ARP stud, baby. <laughs> so oh, get... Wrong box. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's 15 head bolts all together. There's five up here that go under the intake manifold. And it says to torque the main 10 first. We do 25 foot pound, 50 foot pound, and then we end at 75 foot pound. And then we come back at the very end and torque the top five at 25 foot pound. Sound good? Sounds better than nice. that. Little goes a long way, but we still put a little line. Why isn't that going on there? Oh, there it is. So on the rocker arms, we're going to torque it down at the base side of the cam, right? Yeah. We're going to rotate the cam. Half the lip, or half the rocker arms are going to be up. The other half are going to be down. We're going to torque the ones that are down to 22 foot pounds, rotate it, and then when the other ones are the base of the other cam, then we're going to torque those two. You think that's a part of the reason the, the one fucked up before is because they didn't torque it right? Yeah. Uh, when I first got the car, 
I drove it for like a day and I had like a weird tone in my exhaust on and only on one side. So I took it home, popped the valve covers off and I noticed that one rocker arm was completely loose. That same rocker arm caused my intake manifold runner to melt through. So Damn. And, and then the, my valve dropped on this side, so that just makes me think that whoever ended up installing the cam kit the first time yeah. didn't torque down the rocker arms to the base of the load. Yeah. So, but we ain't gonna make that mistake this time. Hell no, mm -hmm. it should be right. I feel like I did it didn't even get the world most things. Uh, so that's pretty much a wrap for this episode pretty much just doing what we can with it outside of the motor and it's just about ready to put it in right yeah just kind of put like the mounts on and whenever we get it on the hoist uh he's gonna put his new clutch on there too but as far as like the manifold and the accessories and all that shit we can do that once it's actually bolted up in the car but yeah. everybody about his channel so i could be famous <laughs> <laughs> That's why they say it takes a couple years to build your ship and motor. Alright, we're going down. Slowly. Traspacio. I'm gonna get my car fixed. I'm gonna give you your truck. That's <laughs> <laughs> good where it's at. It needs to come. Oh, you wanna go back no further? Yeah. It's hitting something on the bottom of the car. Alright, the important part is to get the mounts lined up first. And then, I'm if, say, uh, if anything, we'll, we'll readjust the transmission. Is the, is the transmission even mounted? No. Honestly, the only thing that's supporting that transmission is my crowbar. Mm -hmm. 